Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be releasing my Valorant Blender model pack. It was brought to my attention a couple days ago that the model pack that I recommended you guys use has since been taken down, so I've now made my own one to replace that. It's completely free and you'll find the download link in the description. In this video I'm going to show you how to download it and use it in order to get some good renders out of it for your thumbnails, wallpapers and all of your other Valorant graphics. Just before we get started, I'd like to say I've made several other tutorials on my channel all revolving around Valorant editing or just gaming editing in general. So if you're interested, make sure you go check them out. If you do end up enjoying this video or find it useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And follow me on my other socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, at RocklandVL. Links will be in the description. And let's get right into it. So in order to download the pack, you're going to want to head into the description and find this mega link. I'll also provide a Google Drive link if the mega link doesn't work for you. And once you click it, it'll bring you to this page, Rockland's Valorant Blender Model Pack.zip. All you're going to do is hit download and you'll see at the top it's going to initialize make sure you allow it to download and give it a second and it will start to download and as you can see it's almost done We've got one second remaining and you'll see as soon as it's done it'll appear down here in the bottom left corner of your browser if you give it one second there it is right there you'll see rockland's valorant blender model pack you right click on it hit show in the folder mine's in my downloads folder and it's going to give you this zip file all you need to do now is extract it using either winrar or 7zip i'll leave links for both of those in the description below i'm going to use winrar so if i open that up you can see here it is I'm just going to drag it out into my downloads you can put it wherever you want i recommend you put it somewhere you'll be able to easily find it i'm just going to leave it in my downloads because I already have a version saved elsewhere and I'm going to close out a WinRAR. Now if you want to you can delete this zip folder or just keep it so that you have the originals available to you. I'm just going to delete mine and then go into the folder. Now in here you'll see the agents, HDRIs and weapons folders as well as the readme.txt which basically just gives you written instructions as well as links to my socials and covers what's in the pack. In the agents folder you'll see all 11 agents are available here including the new agent Rainer. In the HDRIs you'll see I've included five HDRIs as well as another readme giving you instructions and links to where I source these and in the weapons folder you'll see 27 different weapons available in here I tried to include pretty much every weapon in the game so you should be able to find exactly what you're looking for in here that's about it for an overview of the pack let's get into using it now you will need blender to make use of these models if you don't have it already it's completely free to download I'm going to leave a link to that in the description as well so you can get that I recommend getting whatever the latest version is and then you should be able to open up the files in here so in order to use it you're going to want to open up the agents folder and find the agent that you want to make a render of. So for me I'm going to go with Jet and then all I'm going to do is either you can double click on it to open it and just use this version or what I would do is create a copy of it like this and then rename it to something else uh, just so that you do have a blank original version available uh, should you ever want to use it again at a later date. So I'm then going to go into the copy so now you can see the models opened up. Some basics for using Blender is the middle mouse button. If you hold it down, you'll be able to rotate around like this. Scrolling in and out is to zoom. If you hold shift and hold the middle mouse button, you'll be able to move side to side and up and down. If you hold control, you'll be able to zoom in and out as well. And over on the left side, you'll see the selection options. So you can tweak select box, circles, lassos, leave yours at tweak. Then under it, you'll see the move tool and the rotation tool. And that's pretty much all you have to worry about for this tutorial. So here you can see we've got Jet in the middle of our scene. Now I want to add weapons to our scene. In my case, I'm going to add her knives. You could add rifles, pistols, any other weapon if you like, as well as you can also add other models. For example, if you wanted to have Jet and Arena in a scene, you could do that as well. And, it just, and it's the exact same method that I'm about to show you. So in order to do that, you're just going to come up to File, go to Append, and you'll see here it should automatically put you into the model pack. If you wanted to add another model, for example, you could come up to say, I don't know, Raise, and then you go into Collection, select raise and hit append and you'll see she will now appear and using the move tool you can drag her across and you can see she's added as well i don't want another agent so i'm going to remove her and instead i'm going to add jet's knives so it's the exact same method i'm going to hit file append and i'm going to back out into you see the, this is the agents folder i'm going to back out one more and then go into the weapons and you'll see them all here so i'm going to find wherever jet's knife is which is right here double click on that go into collection click collection and hit append and you'll see the knife has now appeared down here on the floor. Now using the move tool, I'll be able to move it up and around just like this, and I'll position that how I want it in a little bit. I'm just gonna leave it off to the side and start positioning my model first. One thing I do recommend you do before modeling is pressing shift A and then adding a camera as I didn't add these already for you. And then you can navigate into the camera view by pressing zero on the numpad. What the camera sees is what your final render will be. So, so we're going to want to move this to a position where it can capture as much or as little of the model as you want. You can either use the move tool and rotation tool to, to move it around or what I recommend you do if you come into the camera view, go up to edit preferences, key map, and if you search 
search for walk, you'll see view navigation, walk, fly, keyboard. I put mine on shift F, which is the default bind on Blender 2.7, and they didn't carry it across to 2.8, so I've just changed mine so that I'm used to it from 2.7. So I recommend you change that to something. Shift F will work, that's what I use. And then all you're gonna want to do is when you're in the camera view, if you press shift F, you'll see this little crosshair will appear, and you'll be able to use your mouse to look around. And then it's W, A, S, and D to move around. If you want to change the speed that you move, you can scroll wheel up and that's going to make you faster. Scroll wheel down and that's going to make you much slower. So basically you just want to try and move around and position it to a point that you're happy with. So I'm going to go for something sort of like something sort of like this. You can always move it later. Now I recommend you stay in the camera view as much as possible when modeling as that's going to give you the best representation of what the final render is going to look like rather than moving around constantly. However, you will have to do this certain times when rotating say elbows and knees and things like that. But if you can stay in the camera view as much as possible, you'll get a better result. In order to pose the model, you're going to make sure that you have the bones selected, then come up to where it says object mode and choose pose mode and you'll see that all the bones will now change different colors. Make sure you have the rotation tool selected and then when you choose different bones, you'll be able to rotate them just like this. You'll see that's gonna do her elbow. You can come up and do the neck. You can do hips, pretty much anything you want will be able to be moved as well as facial expressions. With facial expressions, I don't recommend you use the rotation but use the move instead. So for example, if I wanted to close her eye, I could do that. But when it comes to things like eyeballs, you will want to use the rotation as that will allow you to change where she's looking like this. If you ever have it, for example, where you click on say an elbow joint and you start rotating it and it's doing things like this, that's because there are actually two bones inside of each other. For example, you see this green bone and there's this red bone beneath it. This red bone is actually the one that controls the elbow. It's just hidden inside of this green one. So make sure when you click on it, if you then click again, you'll see all these lines going in between joining all the bones together. Make sure that those are available. That's basically going to show you that this bone is affecting all these other bones by these perforated lines. Whereas if you're doing something like this, that's just going to change the mesh around her elbow rather than moving the whole arm like it would like this, for example. If you are struggling to move certain things like elbows, especially things that are forward facing, moving an elbow like this is probably not the best way to do it. You can come out of the camera by holding the middle mouse button and rotating and that way you'll be able to position the arm a lot more easily. Just bear in mind that the camera view is what's gonna be the final render. Uh, and worst case scenario, if you do position it, so she's facing sideways like this, and the camera view now looks like this, and that's not what you want, you can always just press Shift F or whatever you bind this to and move it over afterwards, it's not that big of a deal. But it's better just to bear in mind that what the camera is seeing is what your final render will be. Another tip I have when it comes to posing your models, especially if you're new to this sort of thing, is to find a reference image. Like for example, if I search throwing knife pose, you can see we've got all of these images to work with. Just find one that you like for example I choose this one if you have a second monitor you can always chuck it over there or what I would do sometimes is if you hit save image as chuck it in your downloads or wherever you want it to go and then if you come up here into blender and change this panel from an outliner to an image editor you'll then be able to open an image so if I go to my downloads and choose this and hit open you'll see that's now available up here and I can scale this down if I need to if the picture's longer or zoom in and out pan across all that sort of thing so for example if I wanted to use this as a reference image that's always in the top corner and I can try and copy that as best as I can with the pose I'm going for on screen and I can try and copy that to get a more organic looking pose rather than sometimes I'll see these poses which are almost robot like and it's not quite as effective in my opinion now to save time I'm going to show you one of the poses which I created for my Valorant thumbnail pack if you haven't checked that out make sure you click in the top right corner right now or there's a link in the description so you can go and check that video out which basically has a bunch of free renders which I've already made as well as screenshots and a PSD with all the necessary files you need to create your own thumbnails. And basically all I've done, you can see the pose up here. I've pretty much copied what he's done from a slightly different perspective. For example, his may be from something more like this angle, whereas I've just moved my camera across to have it something more like this. As well as I've positioned some of her knives around her, like when she's using her ultimate, for example. All I've done for that, much the same as when I pose the character. With the knives, they don't have bones, so you don't need to go into pose mode. You can just stay in object mode and just drag them around like this and rotate them as well and that's how i've basically done that the rest of it was posed exactly the same as i was showing you a minute ago it just takes a little bit of time and matching a reference image and now once you're happy with your render you're going to want to add some lighting so in the pack i've included five hdris which you can use each hdri is different lighting environments so in order to apply them to your render you're going to want to come over to the shading tab up here you'll probably see this if you don't don't worry this is your object texture which you don't need to worry about what you're going to want to do is come from object down to world and you should be presented with these two nodes. It's super duper simple and takes literally five seconds, so don't worry. All we're gonna do is select this background node and press delete, then press Shift A 
search and search for environment texture and drag color to surface and then hit open and if you go into the model pack into the hdris and choose one of these so for all the renders that i did for my for my model pack i used delta however you can use any of them just try each one out and they'll give you slightly different light -like scenarios but i'm going to use delta just for the sake of this tutorial and then you're going to hit open image and you may see that not really much has changed however if you click the rendered view you'll see now she's got this lighting applied compared to before where it would have looked something like this when you put the hdri on it gives much better lighting especially if you jump to the camera view you can see we've got much better shadows if you want to try out different different HDRIs, you just click open, choose a different one, for example, Chinese Garden, hit open, and you'll see the lighting will change slightly. If I go into Photo Studio, for example, you'll see it's a much more flat light. Colorful Studio, pretty much the same thing, however, it's slightly more directional. And Skies on Fire, more of a warmer tone, especially when it comes to skin and things like that. I'm just gonna use Delta, as that's what I used before. However, you can use whichever one you feel looks the best. And then if you go back to the material view and come over to the layout tab and you'll be back where you were before. Now, all we have to do is render it out. In order to do that, you just want to make sure you've got your render settings set properly. They should automatically be set. I did save them all using the same render settings, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. However, if you are importing them into your own scenes and things like that, then, then you may have just the default supplied. So I'm going to run through those quickly. When I come over to the render properties panel, change the render engine, make sure it's on cycles and the devices on GPU compute if you have a decent graphics card and then where it says sampling and render make this somewhere between 300 and 500 for the best results the more you put obviously the longer the render will be the more samples you have the longer the render will be but the higher quality it will be I wouldn't recommend going below 300 for something like this and if you come down to fill make sure you tick transparent otherwise you'll see when you're in the rendered view you have the background of the HDRI whereas if you tick transparent you'll see the background disappears in the scene tab make sure you have the resolution at 1920 by 1080 i sometimes do mine at 1440p which is 2560 by 1440 depending on whatever resolution you want so for example a thumbnail 1920 by 1080 is fine and then come down to the layer properties and make sure you tick denoising at the bottom that's going to remove any grain from the image i'll put a before and after picture on screen right now so you can see what the difference is so make sure you have that ticked and that's pretty much it for the render settings all you're going to do now is press f12 on your keyboard and it's going to bring up the render panel and it's going to render out your image and as you can see the image has now been rendered out all you want to do now is come up to image hit save as find a place to save it and call it whatever i'm just gonna leave mine as untitled obviously name it and put it wherever you want it to be make sure you're on rgba drop the compression to zero color depth of eight is perfectly fine and hit save image and now you'll see when you navigate to that to the folder you saved it in you can see untitled if we drag that across and there you go you've got your render ready to be added to your thumbnails wallpapers whatever you want to do with it and yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial if you guys did enjoy or find it useful make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe we're so close to 2000 subscribers let's get there by the end of next week as well as make sure you follow me on my other socials at rockland vl on instagram twitter tiktok pretty much everything and yeah that's pretty much it i'll catch you guys in the next video